why we must all be leaders. It is May 1992, and I am 11 years old, living with my parents in a two-bedroom flat in Lambeth, southwest London. I share my bedroom with my younger sister, single beds on both sides of the room, a bright and airy space with large windows overlooking the main road. But today, I don't enjoy the brightness. I just came home from school, slammed the front door, and ran straight to my room, crying my eyes out on my pillow to silence the noise. Nyarowo, my child, what happened? I didn't hear my mom running after me. I hate school. I hate all the children there. And I will never, ever, ever wear this dress again. Nyerowo, what happened? You look so pretty. Look at the golden threads. Look at the sleeves. You look like an angel. What happened at school today? Mom, they all laughed at me. They kept mocking me for wearing this dress. They were pointing at me and calling me names. I hate them. Nyaro, people out there are leaders and followers. You will have leaders who will mock you and people who will mimic them. But you will have others who will see the unicorn in you and embrace all your superpowers. I want you to remember this today. Real leaders embrace the superpowers of others. Isn't your mom annoyingly right sometimes? You see, I was born and raised in Nigeria. And back then, I was at the top of my game, loved and respected by all. I taught Sunday school at my local church, for which I had to stand on top of the table to be seen by everyone. I would often gather my friends from the neighborhood together, and we would do hide and seek, 100 meters race, or sometimes we'll just lounge around singing and dancing. I was living my best life with confidence. Coming to London was a culture shock. People laughed at my accent. They laughed at my clothes. I mean, look around, everyone. We are all foreigners. How can someone with an accent say that I've got an accent? Isn't that funny to you? Guys, if English is not your mother language, and even if it is, stop laughing at other people's accents. 
Real leaders embrace others. They are not followers. It is December 2018, two weeks before the Christmas holidays, and the final assembly for the year 10 students before the breakup. I want you to meet Joy, beautiful, dark chocolate, bright, brown-eyed, 14-year-old girl. We are in the assembly hall of her school. A room with high ceilings, floor to ceiling windows, with chairs nicely laid out, row after row in theater style. A hundred schoolgirls sat on the chairs, and their teachers nicely laid out on both sides of the room like soldiers ready for war. Today is not like previous assemblies. Today, Joy takes center stage. As she opens her mouth to sing, the whole room falls to silence. And the entire audience gasps in awe. An angelic voice is not something you hear every day. Her voice was quite shaky, initially overwhelmed with the prospects of singing in front of her peers. This was her first time singing in front of an audience. But she was determined to finish that song and be strong. The moment she ends the last note, loud applause bellows up in the assembly hall. Joy's pairs are all clapping for her. Tears rolling down her cheeks. She couldn't say a word. And then suddenly, Joy starts speaking. My name is Joy, and I am 14 years old. I had problems thinking I couldn't go anywhere without people saying things about me. I was insecure about myself, thinking I had ugly eyes, ugly lips, and an ugly nose. I was bullied in primary and secondary school. I never had any friends to play with. And to answer the bullying, I became a bully. Until I met Magdalene and her foundation, I was suspended from school because of bad behavior. But now, I'm very hopeful of completing my secondary school here in this place. The whole audience was speechless. Joy's peers were all clapping for her. She kept saying, thank you for believing in me. Thank you for helping me love myself to be a better person and to make me know that I am a good person. I am pretty. 
You gave me eight weeks. And those were the best weeks of my life. You showed me what I was doing to others. And that changed my life. This time, it was all of us from the foundation crying with happiness and pride. We created a unicorn, a future leader. You see, we all go through struggles. And some of us get help quickly to find our superpowers. Whilst for others, it may take a little longer. But it takes a strong determination to be able to change your life and behavior. True leaders, Embrace the superpowers of others. At that moment, I realized what my mom said all those years ago, that true leaders can only create leaders. I created a team of youth workers, leaders who find the superpowers in every child that the system has stamped as an outsider, problematic, or a lost cause. And they are ready to kick them out rather than walk beside them. We may still be struggling to find out what our superpowers are. But understanding your cultural differences or your uniqueness is the first step towards your leadership journey. Embracing everything that made people mock you, that made you feel hopeless and helpless, is the secret to your strength, your superpower. Next time, when you see a person who doesn't act or look like a leader. Remember, true leaders embraces the superpower of others. My name is Magdalene Adonaike. Thank you.